Did I get it? I think I would have gotten it by now. <gasps> I f got it! Holy Hello everyone, this is Preheat. Welcome back to another World of Warcraft video. Today we're going to be talking about the Evoker Legendary. So if you follow me on social media, which you should go do that if you don't already, uh, then you know that I've been doing this thing called Project Lego, where basically I am raising a Draktir army, making as many Evokers as possible to try and maximize the odds that I get the Evoker Legendary. And after seven days and 13 Evokers, I'm happy to tell you that I actually did get my hands on a cracked Titan Gym and I was able to also craft a Legendary as well. So thank you everyone who joined me on this adventure. It's been a really fun past seven days. And would you believe it? I actually got the legendary on my main. So this obviously means I made a lot of evoker alts for basically no reason, but uh, you know, may their names be ever remembered. Honestly, I was completely blindsided by the fact that I got it on my main of all the characters. Once again, thank you everyone who joined me on this journey to get the evoker legendary. But what I want to talk about today is how to actually craft this thing. There are definitely things that I felt were a bit lacking and there are things that I learned along the way that I want to share with you because they're things that I wish I had known sooner. And there are things that you can do today, even if you don't have your Evoker Legendary yet, if you haven't been lucky enough to get the Crack Titan Gym, uh, there are things you can do now in preparation that will save you time later. Obviously, the first step in this whole process is to get your Crack Titan Gym. And unfortunately, this is also the most RNG step. And the only way to increase the odds of you getting this thing are just by having more than one evoker. Once again, I don't recommend going crazy with making a whole bunch of evokers unless you're just super dead set on getting this thing as soon as possible because you cannot trade the item. Once you get it, you will have to re-gear your character. Whichever evoker gets it, that will just be your new main. So for those of you who want to put yourself through all that and choose a new evoker as your main, which once again, I don't recommend, but if you want to do that, I will give you all of the information on how you can do it as efficiently as possible at the end of this video. But for now, we're going to focus on how to get it on your main. So you only get a roll per difficulty per week on your evoker. And if you do the higher tier content, so if you do heroic, for instance, it's going to cover your normal and your LFR as well. So whichever mode you can do on the highest difficulty, that's going to be the one you should focus on. And you don't really have to worry about going back and doing like normal and LFR as well, right? If you do them sequentially, it doesn't decrease your luck. It just doesn't increase it either. It's just more work for the same exact drop rate. You would just get it sooner in that case. Once you get your chance at the Evoker Legendary, you are done for that lockout, right? There's no way to increase your chance of getting the Legendary until the next week comes. But once you get your Crack Titan Gem, you're going to want to take that item to Valdraken. And you'll notice that if you click it or if you have some sort of add-on that accepts quests, you won't actually have an item in your bags, right? So don't panic. Don't panic. The item is still there. You'll know you get it because it just it flourishes whenever the boss is killed. You don't actually have to loot the chest. It just pops up. Um, but uh, if you accept the quest, the item disappears. You need to go to Valdraken up to the very top of the tower and you need to speak to Nors Domu and that's going to start the legendary quest line. So Nors Domu is going to send you to the southeast of the Zerlet Cavern where this all began, where Sarkrath lost the Oathbinder and it was broken. And you're going to watch a short cinematic that describes how there's a secret third specialization for Evoker. You're uncovering these lost memories. After you see a short cutscene there, you're going to be sent back to Veldraken and Nors Domu will have a quest for you to collect three legendary pieces. OK, so before we even get into what Ancient Memories is and how this affects different people with different professions, I want to talk about what you can do today to start working on your legendary, because this is something you're going to have to do later on. And if you don't do it right now, you're going to have to wait. The biggest thing are these elemental souls here, and you'll notice that you need to have three of each. You cannot purchase these from the auction house. You have to do this manually and it will take some time because the item that you're using has a cooldown. So the item in question is the Zapdrottle Soul Inhaler. You'll need one of these and then you're going to need at least 12 of these empty soul cages. And uh, basically how this works is you're just going to be killing these elementals in these various zones. I have each one marked on the map. So one's up here. This is where the earth one is. We have the uh, air one over here. Um, description below will have the coordinates for each of these. This one is for the icy one, and then this one is here for the fire one. Uh, basically, you use the Zap Throttle Soul Inhaler on the elemental. You kill it within 30 seconds. It's going to put the soul inside of the empty soul cage. Uh, it'll say encaged um, elemental soul, right? And you're going to need to leave that in your bag for 15 real minutes. Uh, you cannot get a second one while you wait on this cooldown. So just let it just sit there. Uh, but what you can do, since the Zapdor All Soul Inhaler only has a five minute cooldown if you actually use it, is you can just basically do a route where you would go get your Earth one, go get your Fire one, go get your uh, Frost one, your Wind one, and just keep doing that on repeat 
right? Because since it has a five minute cooldown, um, by the time you get to the first one again, it will be back, right? So you just have to do that three times. So also just keep in mind that these elementals do have abilities that can CC you. And if they CC you while you are channeling your beam on them, you will have to wait 45 seconds for your Zapdrottle Soul Inhaler to finish. There's really not uh, too many of these that will mix you up, but I will say that these earth elementals right here, these ones are the worst, right? So whenever you pull them, um, they're going to do this cast right here, Seismic Spike. You want to interrupt that and then immediately use your Soul Inhaler on them. If you don't interrupt that cast or if you just randomly use the Soul Inhaler thing, um, you are very likely to be stunned and uh, that's going to be really frustrating to you. I'll let it go off right here. See, my character is stunned. Um, but obviously, since I already got the thing off, I just have to uh, kill it within 30 seconds and boom. Keep in mind, uh, if I right click this, I will open it and I will basically delete the contents, converting into elemental stuff. So don't do that. Um, let it cool off in your inventory. So once you've gotten the souls, that is the only thing that's really time gated that you can get your hands on before you have the legendary. But there are other things that you can buy if you want to just have them ahead of time. So that's going to be the 20 cello alloy, the uh, 50 awaken order. It's 25 on this one, 25 on another order. You're also going to need 50 obsidian seared alloy. Keep in mind, you don't actually have to have any sort of rank on these. You can just buy whatever rank is the cheapest. That's why I highly recommend on that. Um, you're also going to need 50 arc light capacitors and you're also going to need uh, 20 illuminated diamonds. This one is actually interesting. So this is the only one where you actually have to get the rank three, but I found that the rank three is usually the same price. So 20 elemental harmony at rank three. And then this item right here, Dracothis, you probably have already gotten some of these, right? This is the crafting reagent um, that alchemists can make. You can just buy them on the auction channels, right? It's relatively simple. Uh, this one does incur cooldown. So if you have alchemists, you can just use your recipe to get these things transmuted. It's pretty easy. Um, but the way that the crafters actually make these legendaries is you have an item called uh, Ancient Memories. Let me see if I can find them. Okay, so I was looking for this in my bag and I don't think it's actually in my bag anymore because I think it deletes it whenever you finish the quest. But you have this item called Ancient Memories. And this is a very interesting item because this is the one that gives blacksmith, jewel crafters, engineers the ability to actually craft these items. And it is a buff that they only have for 30 minutes. Uh, they will get like a free skill point, like first time craft from doing it. So hopefully people are willing to do this. You don't have to be any sort of level. You could be like level one. You could do this on your alt if you have it on another account, right? Uh, or just get someone in your guild to, to make an alt and go these uh, professions for it. But uh, anyways, um, the item itself also has another purpose, which is to give that person a buff that then they can give to you to increase the rate at which you get temporal vestigials. This is the biggest bottleneck in this entire quest, I'd say. So you're going to need 400 of these in total and you get them mainly from Ferric Assaults. I I mean, you can get them from all of the, the things, right? Like whenever you get fleeing glow spores and you get uh, fragments and all that, you can get some of them. But by far, the easiest way to farm them is just to do the Ferric Assaults over and over and over and over. And it also turns out the best way to complete the quest that gives you the buff for 50% more vestigials is also to do Ferric Assaults. So the Ferric Assaults themselves um, they're very straightforward. You can just watch like a video on it or just like look up a guide, but basically you just, you run around and you collect these little crystals. Uh, you collect five of them, you use them, you spawn a little elite and then you kill that elite. Uh, once you summon it, it gives you more crystals. It also drops crystals and then you take those and you summon the bigger elite and you kill him and you just do this on repeat. Uh, the best way to do this is just find a group of people who are doing this all together in the group finder. And then, uh, it basically it multiplies by how many um, people are in your group, how many of these you're gonna have per minute because uh, each person is gonna gain their own crystals. So having more people in the group exponentially increases how quickly you can go. I definitely recommend doing this at least in a pair of two. Um, you can do it on your own though if you want. So uh, like I was saying, the item can be used to bestow someone a quest, right? This can also be used on yourself. Very important to note. So if you use the ancient memories on yourself, you give yourself the quest. It kind of doesn't make sense because the quest says that like you you gain uh, progress by being like in a party with someone else. The way I did it was I was just in a party with someone, but they weren't even near me and I didn't even have them uh, buffed. They were actually offline and uh, I was able to get that quest done myself. And then I was able to actually give myself this buff, the Empowered Temporal Glossomer that gives me 50% more temporal vestigials. And uh, because this buff goes away whenever the person leaves the party, and because you're using it on yourself, it just never goes away. So my character just like permanently has this buff. So if you're doing this quest, I highly recommend it. The first thing you do is use the ancient memories on your own character, pick up your own quest. And then that way, once you get this quest done, you can use the item on yourself and then you'll just permanently have 
50% faster rate of getting these temporal vestigials that will save you a ton of time in this entire process. Uh, but you will probably have to spend a couple hours grinding the Ferric Assaults, it's just how it is. Uh, definitely, if, you know, find friends, like I said, uh, that's the best way to do it. And then whenever it comes to the other two, so the Fleeting Glow Spores you get mainly from the digs, uh, the Zero Lake digs. I recommend that you have at least three of these things stockpiled before you go and do your Evoker Quest, if not more. These things are a huge pain to get if you don't already have the dig stocked up. So that's another thing you should definitely try to get done ahead of time before you get your legendary. Try to have at least four or five of these. Um, it's definitely possible that you just get unlucky and you don't get any. Um, I really don't like the design of this quest. Basically, how it works is you either get a whole bunch of them or you get zero of them. And you can just get really unlucky. For me, I was super unlucky. I had three stockpiled and then two of mine were complete duds. And then the last one I had uh, was the only one that gave me points. I had got like 20 from it. You need 50 in total. So I had to fly around in the Zero Lake Caverns and basically dig through trash piles for like two and a half hours until I finally got the rest of them that I needed. And also those trash piles are super RNG too. So it's really, really frustrating. I think I had like nine trash piles in a row where I just got absolutely nothing. Um, if you're in a situation where you have to dig through the trash piles, I highly, highly recommend that you go on war mode check out all of the nodes, go back, leave war mode and just flip it back and forth because that will actually help those respawn quicker. Um, but just just have the dig maps stockpiled like they just don't even deal with this. Um, and then the last part is the Aberus raid and uh, these drop from Heroic, Normal, LFR, but by far the best way to get them is just to go into Heroic. You can get like six of them per kill. Um, you can also just get zero, right? It's RNG, but uh, just go in there and Heroic, kill as many bosses as you can. If you don't get all of them you need, then do Normal and go down the list. Um, highly recommend whenever you are going for the legendary that you try not to lock yourself to heroic before you kill Sarkrath because if you get your legendary item that way you can go back and do the other bosses right because if you're locked this is the only thing that can actually force you to wait until the next reset right because you you actually have to be able to like kill those bosses for loot to be able to get these ancient elementium fragments. Um, but once you've collected all the necessary materials, so that's 400 of the temporal vestigials and then uh, all of these legendary pieces, the glow spores, the, the shadow flame from the ferric assaults, uh, the ancient elementium fragments. Once you've gotten all of that, you use the item on your crafter, right? The ancient uh, memories, and that's going to give them the buff. It will also give them uh, give you a 30 minute cooldown. So you want to kind of space these out if you can. Right. And then they're going to be able to do your work order. And like I said, they don't have to be anything uh, of a good crafter, they can just be a level one and it'll work just fine, but it has to be someone on a separate account um, or it can be yourself, but you'd have to drop a profession, right? So if you do that, um, you know, you're obviously gonna lose whatever progress you have in your current profession. So I don't recommend it. Um, I just had someone else do it for me. That was the easiest way for me. So basically, once you claim all three of these pieces, you're gonna go back to Norse Domu and then you're gonna have a quick little cinematic that you have to watch. Um, and uh, you're going to kill like one mob and you will get your legendary. And what's really cool about this quest is there's neat RP with it. All of these NPCs, they have like their own names. It, it's obviously like a little tongue in cheek, right? Because you have like this fake raid killing Deathwing. But um, but yeah, um, the, the quest itself, very epic, very fun. I uh, really don't like the design of how the legendary seems to be just completely RNG. I really don't like the fact that it seems easier to get it by just making more evokers. Personally, I'm up against this. I, I just don't like it. Um, you know, it, it seems like there's no bad luck protection built in. But then again, I'm also seeing a lot more legendaries this week. So maybe it's just confirmation bias. Maybe it's just tinfoil. But um, maybe the rate is increasing every week. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Right. It's too early to say. But um, yeah, if you're interested in getting this legendary, I definitely recommend at the very least that you stockpile your maps, that you go and get your souls ahead of time and that you keep an eye out for a good sale on the items that you need to collect. And once you've done that, you're pretty much good to go. Um, you should be able to knock it out pretty much in one sitting. I was completely unprepared and I still got it done in one sitting, uh, but it did take me a couple hours. All right, and that's it for most people. Now, like I promised, I will share some secrets with you since you made it to the end of the video. Keep in mind, this is only for the insane people out there. So if you are sane, then feel free to just close this video. Uh, but make sure if you learn something from this video that you give the video a thumbs up and if you want to see more of my content, be sure to subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, and hopefully i see you in the next one. Okay, so if you're still here, uh, I do have some things to show you. So you might be wondering how I have so many evokers on the same account. 
So the reason why this works is because I didn't actually create these evokers on this account. They were created on a separate account. The best way to do this, if you want to have more than one evoker on the same server, on the same account, is you have a second account that has Dragonfly on it. If you don't have an evoker on the account, you get one for free. By free, I mean you don't have to have a level 50 on that server to create an evoker, which is normally the requirement. So what you can do is you can make the evoker, you can level it up to 60, and then at that point you can transfer it to your main account, or you can just wait until it's 70 and then transfer it, right? But the idea is you want to transfer it off the main account because you want to free up the slot, because once the character is gone from that account, then you now have a free evoker again. So you can just keep creating more and more evokers and you can keep transferring them to your main account. That's how I have all of these evokers here. Now there are two other ways that you can do this and one way doesn't even involve having a second account. So one thing you can do is just create evokers on different realms on your main account without having a second account. Keep in mind, if you do this, you have to have a level 50 on every realm that you do this on. So that means that you're gonna have to also level one additional level 50 for every single evoker that you have. Um, obviously this doesn't cost money, which is great, right? So you don't have to have a second WoW with, with Dragonflight. You don't have to pay any realm transfers, uh, but it is a lot of extra work. And then the third way, which is the most efficient kind of upfront, and it's also free, but it's probably less efficient over time, is you create the evokers on your second account, but instead of transferring them and having to wait for the evoker to actually transfer off, because there is uh, usually around 30 minutes to an hour you have to wait for that, um, you just delete the evoker, right? So if you're going this route, I highly recommend that you do heroic. And uh, you're not going to want to be geared enough to do heroic. That's going to waste too much time. You would want to just level the evoker, get it boosted, and then go straight into a curved boost. Um, so this is a good time to talk about how boosting works, because if you're leveling a bunch of evokers, you're going to want to hear this. It's very important. So um, once you leave the starting zone right now with the EXP buff, you're going to be around 61. You can pick up the Fire Festival quests. You can throw the torches. You'll hit 61 pretty easily. So the best way to find a booster is you want to right click your general tab right here. You want to click settings. And then once you're in here, you're going to want to click channels and then turn on services. Once you do that, um, if you look down at your chat, it's just going to start going like crazy. It's really, really late right now for EU. So there's not going to be much messages, but usually this flies so fast that you can't even keep up with it. You're going to see people offering to do all sorts of boosting, right? All you have to do is just find the person there and literally just say, hey, I'm looking for 61 to 70. My offer is 80K or whatever you want to offer, right? Usually the price is around 80K gold for 61 to 70. Um, they're going to teleport you out to a zone. It's uh, one of a couple zones and you just have to AFK and you level up in like an hour. It's actually insanely fast. This is by far the fastest way to level. Um, and once your character is level 70, you can do one of two things. Either you can just buy a curve boost, which usually you want to wait until later in the week to get that because it's going to be cheaper since people will be saved. Um, basically, people will just bring your character to Roke and they'll just kill the boss for you. You just lay down on the ground and you see if you get your legendary. Um, I would say usually when it comes to price on this thing right now, it costs around 80K. So in total, that's going to be around 60K per evoker. Um, if you consider how much the WoW token is right now, that's about half a WoW token, which means it's around $10 per evoker, not including the transfer fee. So you can see how this kind of adds up. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, I was sharing my secrets. So if you want to know how I've been doing this, I've just been using my gold for this, right? No big deal. Um, in terms of like how much it actually costs on the EU token, if you convert it into like US dollars, um, it's around like a Big Mac, right, to, to get a character up. So I don't really care too much. Um, I wasn't actually doing Heroic Boost, I was doing just LFR. So if you want to gear for LFR, the best way to do that is uh, you can use a trick to get your item level to be high enough. Um, so the first step is you want to craft up some of this PvP loot here. Um, I can craft it myself, you can just buy it on the auction house too. It's the Obsidian Combatant Loot. Get you a full set of these armor pieces, they're really really cheap. Uh, usually a full set will run you around 150 per piece, right? And you wear, uh, you want this for every slot, okay? And uh, I have the ability to just craft this all in house, so it's really, really cheap for me. But on your auction house, it might be expensive for you. It just depends on your server. Uh, but if you've got the full 379 PvP loot, all you have to do is get a pair of BOEs. Yeah, so like this evoker right here is a perfect example, right? So if you look at my character's item level, I'm 379. I'm actually 374 because my weapon isn't even 3. Uh, 79. But then in my bags, I've got these BOEs, this 428 belt, this 415 wrist that's cloth, 
this, uh, f you know, 428 chest, and then I have just like a random weapon. And uh, by having these items in my bag, not even equipping them, it brings my item level up to 387, which is one item level higher, uh, 386 in order to queue up for LFR. Um, so yeah, this is the best way to do it. Um, if you want to just queue up for LFR, obviously it's uh, it's probably more efficient if you just do the heroics time-wise, but obviously that's going to cost gold, and I was trying to avoid doing that. That's why I was just doing LFRs first to see if I could just luck into it, right? Um, but if you want to do this route, um, you know, by all means, these are the tips I've learned by doing this over and over and over again. Like I said, I've done this 13 times, so you could say I have a little practice doing it. And my best run, uh, let me know if you can beat it is one hour and 22 minutes from character creation to killing the boss on LFR. I'm pretty happy with that record. I think it's probably, uh, it's gonna be hard to beat. I, I'll just put it that way. Uh, but yeah, if you beat the record, let me know. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this project, I had to say. It's uh, it's obviously a stunt, right? I kind of just did this for fun to you know see uh, how people would react and, and start a conversation about the legendary item. Uh, but I do have plans to take my entire VOD of how the entire journey happened over the seven days, condense it down to like around 20 minutes and kind of like a highlights reel and maybe post that as a video in the future. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that, if I should put the time into editing that. But uh, anyways, thank you for sticking around for the end of the video. Hopefully this helped you out. And uh, I wish you the best of luck when it comes to your legendary. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.